I've been in training. Got my new enhanced gloves right here. Who's my next opponent going to be? Apollo? Clubber? Rocky? Mikey? I don't have ears for him to bite. <laughs> I could just peck at his. Who else? Mr. Dream? Or that fat hippo guy? Who's next? Come on! Who's next? Okay, to transform Blitzwing, we're going to start by transforming him into the airplane. Simply because he comes packaged as the tank. So you go from tank to robot to airplane. So we'll just start by turning him into the airplane. To do that, first thing we've got, first thing we do is we pop his chest panel free. Then we're going to fold it up over his head like so. We'll come here to the side and we're going to raise up the entire back unit like so. It'll hang loose here on him, but that's okay. Then the next thing we're going to do is we open up the chest plate here. We're going to rotate it around so it brings out the airplane cockpit and then we will close it up. Then we're going to come back here, we're going to turn him around. Uh, we're going to open up the cockpit on this side. Because uh, then we're going to fold out a silver nose for the plane. And then close that back up. Turning him about around again to the front. We're going to stretch his arms out a bit because we are going to rotate these tan pieces that are on his arms. They got to get rotated all the way around and then folded up to cover the shoulders. Then once we've done that, you'll rotate his fists, so the fists go inside his arms. So now once we've done that, we're going to come down here to his legs. Spread his legs open a little bit, because on the inside, we're going to start folding out the wings. So get those legs opened up all the way, and fan out the wings in their entirety. And of course, once you've done that, you can kind of bring them down here a little closer together. Close his feet up. Front and back, so that that way it forms. Now first off, you got to move the silver tail wind fins, because they're holding the front feet in. Of course, once you've done that, then it comes time to do some proper leg bends. So we've got to get it to bend right there at the knee. And fold up. Like so. So they rest up against the hip shield.
Then, of course, once we've done that, we'll flip him back over like so. So we've got to separate the arm at the shoulder. Should just pop free there, like so. And then this hole that's now present in the shoulder should fold over and allow the top portion of it to clamp to a post at his hip. There we go. Do the same thing with the other arm. So this way the arms are positioned under the wings. And of course once we've done that we can finally fold all of this back down. And once it's in position, we can connect the chest plate up here so that it kind of holds everything. There is a landing gear that you can fold down right now. Then you'd fold in these wings at the sides, little tiny ones. So they're now folded inward. Then we can come up here to the top of the plane and fold down these portions to complete the look. And there's Blitzwing in his airplane mode. Uh, sort of done up similar to the Generation 1 version. Excuse me, there it is. Tank turret comes loose on my old one. Now, of course, there is a way to add some extra accessories to this one. Let's get the old one out of the way here so we can do that. You can attach the guns back here on this purple protrusion so that his guns are attached. doesn't want to hold the other gun for some reason. Probably not secured. There we go. Let's fix that. There we go. Got the gun in. I no wonder. I wonder who's having a fight with it. It's upside down. <laughs> Alright, once those are in, you'll come around here to the back of the plane. You'll open up the bottom of his thrusters. Come all the way open and flat. Because you will take the boosters here. It'll end up holding them together, but you rotate the hands or insert the hands so you got the four at the top and the two at the bottom. Upside down, stupid. Because then you're going to take these circular knobs and plug them in one at a time into the back. And there you go. You've got a modified version of an old style MIG with added booster engines on it. I tell you, if Tom Cruise took on this kind of a MIG in Top Gun, he wouldn't have lasted. This MIG could outrun him. And not have to worry about the G-forces killing the pilot. Okay, let's take a look at Blitzwing's articulation. 
And he has about what you would expect for a toy of his size. His head can be turned from side to side, and it is on a ball joint, so it will rock up and down a bit. His arms can raise out about so far. And while they, you know, they can't really rotate at the shoulder, they only go up about so far. His arm can be bent at the elbow 90 degrees. And he does have the swivel at the bicep. As you saw earlier, we can turn his hand at the wrist all the way around. He can be twisted at his hips, so he's got some dance moves going there. His legs can be spread apart into almost full splits. He does have a decent thigh cut in there on his legs. His legs can be raised at the hip 90 degrees, and he can also bend at the knee just slightly greater than 90 degrees. So all in all, he does have some good range of motion. Okay, now that we've got him flipped back to robot mode, we can now try to get him into his tank mode. And that mode is a little more complicated. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we got to work with his arms. So we get the arms. We're going to rotate these panels again so that we can fold his fists back inside. And of course, get the side panel. The long one against the back of his arm, with the other one up and into his shoulder. So that way it secures everything. There we go. That gets all, that gets the arms all in. Now we're going to shift those a bit so that we can lift up the edges of his hip shield. Because we're going to come down here to his legs. I'm going to open up the wings again. But we don't need to open them as wide. Just at least enough to get things open. Because once everything's opened up, we're going to separate the knees and start folding the legs inward. Come on. There we go. Once they've all been folded down, you can press the legs together. And then go back to folding the leg covers over. Before you connect them together, get the legs all folded up, panels all folded up. Then you can put the legs together. And we'll separate these silver fins and fold them back. So that way the feet can be closed up. And we can also fold those down again, because we are done with that. Then now, we'll come up here to his chest, pop the chest plate free, fold it up, get it straight, <clears throat> and raise up everything from the back side. In a moment, we're going to fold it all down, but first, open up this central panel so that we can rotate his head back in and then close it up. 
And once that's been done, we can continue to fold the back piece. Get it all filled down and fold this purple plate. So that it lines up and catches itself right there. Now, these plates here on the side, they are double hinged, so get them to stretch out and then fold under. Like so. They should also have a tab here that will connect to the silver fins. So, that way you know you've got them locked in position. And it will keep the tank steady. Then you'll take these silver purple wings on the sides, fold them straight out. And then fold the little section there on up and snap it into place to completely form the tread. There we go. Then you can raise up the tank turret and fold it down. Then we're going to turn it around so the gun barrel's pointing the other way because there's a hidden panel here that you can pop open and fold the complete turret out and then close it up tight. And then there you have it folks. Blitzwing is now in his tank mode. I'm trying to quickly get the other one ready. To... But since he's old, he likes to fall apart. There we go. There's the original tank. For a size comparison. Or basically a just for fun comparison. Now, of course, to get Blitzwing fully operational with all of his weapons, you take his guns and you insert them in these purple pieces up here. That gives him some more coverage. And while they don't mention it in the instructions, I like on this mode, if I'm going to keep him stored, put the sword on top so at least it's somewhere with him. Then you're going to take the gauntlets, you will remove the finger section, and you'll see there's a hole here on the back of them. They attach to a post on the inside. Don't press it in too snugly or you'll find it's a pain to get them back out, as I did this morning. Could have kicked myself for doing that. Now, as you'll notice, the plastic protrusion on each one, or underneath it, there is a little slot. Get that gun bag over here. As we were saying, there's a little slot in there. And it should line up with a spot right here on the side of the turret. And then the little square knob at the front of the missile box should connect in on this impression on the side. Just put them on there. Get this stupid gun back on. And then there you have it. Blitzwing not only has some extra guns, but now he's got missiles for his tank mode. All in all, it still looks silly. So now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of this version of Blitzwing? 
Well, it's definitely a significant improvement from the Generation 1 version of Blitzwing. It's a little more complicated to transform than the Titan's Return version of Blitzwing, which I do have. So, it does have that going for it, and it does at least look a little bit better than that one. The big thing I have the gripe with is the inclusion of the gauntlets. I really don't like them. I find them kind of stupid, and... Well, they go on to all the modes real well, and that it is a nice thing that Hasbro did that. It's kind of like the coal car that came with Astro Train. It could be used on all the modes. But at least the coal car made a little more sense. I mean, as a backpack for the robot, it was okay, but it was better off as holding all the extra guns. It made it needed some armor for the spaceship, which was eh, all right, but it also made a launching platform so that you could display the space shuttle in launch mode, so that kind of made it useful. These, however, really aren't. They're a pain in the butt to attach to the robot's hands due to where the post is positioned inside there. As afterburners on the plane, well, if you tend end up looking at it, it looks a little too boxy on the back side. And then here on the sides of the tank, it just unfortunately the red and purple kind of stand out a little too much. And then of course with the way they're hanging there on the side, it almost looks like that they could come off relatively easily. So all in all, the toy it's, itself is excellent, and they do like the dual guns and the sword, but it's just, I think it could have been better off if they had left the gauntlets behind. At any rate, that's my review of Legacy Blitzwing. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do remember that if you like the content that we feature here on this channel, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. So now for next year, well, we're still undecided at this point. If I've gotten some of the legacy, if I've gotten some more legacy toys from Wave 3, we might start reviewing them. But the plan is, is to go back to studio, since I do have a mix of regular and 86 guys to start with. But at any rate, I want to wish all of my viewers and fans out there a happy new year. Let's hope 2023 gets better for all of us. We got to keep saying it. One of these days, it's going to be true. This is Sparks to 1701, wishing everybody a happy and prosperous new year. Enjoy yourselves, and I'll catch you all later. Hello, everybody. Sparks to 1701 here. We're taking a look at the newest triple changer to come about. This is Blitzwing. Of course, Blitzwing will be familiar to Generation 1 fans, as here is his original toy. The original Blitzwing came out in 1985. He was an immediate hit among the Transformer fans, since his military motif, alternate modes, really worked out well with the battle toy line. According to the information from his tech specs and the More Than Meets the Eye guidebooks, Blitzwing was more of a tool used by Shockwave than much of anything else as Blitzwing was kept under control from being a raging berserker by using simple propaganda. So more than likely, probably along with that propaganda stuff, Shockwave may have also been implanting other commands into him to probably make him his own personal, so make him his own personal soldier. I mean, it is known that Shockwave does plan, when logic allows, for him to overthrow Megatron. 
So if he already knows one day he's going to try, he might as well get some loyal troops. And while he knows that ones like Starscream can't be bought or trusted, Shockwave would definitely be in a position to insert commands into warriors that he's helping to create. Like Blitzwing here. Sort of similar to the Order 66 command that Emperor Palpatine put into the clone troopers in the Star Wars movies. It's kind of an idea to think about, at least. We can debate about it down in the comments section. And now let's get old Blitzwing out of the way. And we'll start looking at the new Blitzwing and his accessories. We'll start off with his sword. Uh, As you can see here from this side angle, mine's a little bent. This is how it came, unfortunately. And all attempts that I've made to try to straighten it have not really yielded any lasting results. So I've kind of given up on straightening it. But I do like the fact that they did give it a nice coat of silver paint. And it actually has a blade, it actually looks like it is a bladed weapon. Unlike the originals, which was basically a giant curved end. I guess that was meant more to make sure we didn't hurt ourselves growing up as kids. And then Blitzwing also has his gun. He has two guns with him this time around instead of one. <clears throat> Both guns are exactly the same, by the way, as you'll soon see in a second. But it also does pay homage to his Generation 1 gun, because it does have a similar bit of features on it. As we have a raised fin here at the back of it, and there is a foregrip. So it does take some inspiration from the original, but not a lot. So that probably works out better for us. Blitzwing can also now store his weapons on his backside. As you can see, here's the second gun. The guns are intended to store back here on his shoulders. As they can be pinned around where their grips surround these little wee wheels. And of course, the hole there on the tank turret is a good place to stick his sword. Which thus leaves Blitzwing's hands free. For his newest accessories, he has a pair of battle gauntlets. As you can see, the bases are not identical because they only have a bit of purple plastic protruding from the one side. So these pieces will double as extra gear for his vehicle modes. In the airplane mode, they will function as afterburners. And on his tank mode, they become missile boxes. And of course, one thing that is similar on both of them is these red hands. The four that are merged together can be positioned. Unfortunately, these two down here cannot be moved. But at any rate, to mount them onto Blitzwing, the instructions recommend that you turn his wrists to the side. And deep inside here, there is a small post. So that that way you can stick his arm in there. And try to mount them on it. Let's try it the other way. Rotate the wrist the other way. Let's see if that works any better. Eh, 
And there we go. Nope. Still can't do it. Let's see if we have it at a different angle where we can try to see what we're doing. There we go. I think we got it. We'll take the other one and we'll... Nope. That one didn't work. Can we get the other one on? Looks like we have. So, well... We'll just try it like that. And, oh, forget it. We're not going to fight with it. So, we've got him now with this one giant metal hand. And while I can see some people will have the play value with it, I really don't care for it. It just, it just looks out of place on him, really. Plus, the red color really doesn't go well with anything on him.